Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Siddiq, and before I dig to the main topic of today, I would like to introduce the group fellows uh, working together with Ramon Carbonell, and he's my first supervisor in this project, and then followed by senior researchers from University of Salamanca and University of Granada, and some co-workers co from Institution of Art Sciences, which was my host institution for the last three years. Uh, I would say welcome to the world of actives of seismic. During my project, I have two main data sets. One was normal incident seismic, and the other was wide angle seismics. The normal incident seismics, they were helping us to delineate the structure of the crust and the upper mantle. Whereas the wide angle seismics, they were providing very well constraints to the, to the distribution of the physical properties. Physical properties like P e wave velocities, shear waves, densities, and poison ratios. So in total, these studies, they were contributing to the study and origin of the topography or the relief. Uh, the study area was Iberian Peninsula, and I would say Bariscan Iberian Peninsula. Uh, it consists of six zones, and the largest zone, which is the central Iberian zone here. Uh, we had the acquisition of Alcudia, which was the main transect, consists of normal incidence and wide angle. Uh, it goes across the Osa Morena zone, which is the suture zone between central Iberian zone and Osa Osa Morena zone and Central Iberian zone, and it goes all the way towards the Madrid, where it's covered by the thick sediments of Madrid Basin. Similar kind of experiment was done a decade ago, which is Iberside, which has been presented from last decade. The local geological settings for the study area, we have the metasedimentary rocks, which are occupying main portion of the seismic transect. Then we have this Madrid Basin situated here. And then in the south, we have the collisional zone. And this yellow line is the transect, which is for the wide angle seismic. And the black line is the transect for the normal incidence seismic. We also did some Booger gravity anomaly from the help of our group fellows. And uh, we see that from south to north, we have a trend from positive towards negative and really negative in the Madrid Basin. And then I will be presenting four shots for, from south towards north across the Alcudia wide angle transect. Uh, first, Alcudia normal incidence transect, so we were using vibro size, and uh, we acquired around 300, no, 230 kilometers long data set and it was imaging about 20 seconds of the crust and upper mantle, which is like 60 kilometers deep. And uh, we did some processing on the data set, and I will not go into details of this processing, it get very boring. And then finally, the result of the Alcudia normal incidence transect, the stack section which was migrated and then depth converted. If we look at the upper crust, I mean the uppermost crust, so it's very much correlating with what we see on the surface topographical map. And then if we see the bottom part of the upper crust, we have imbricate thrust zones, which are actually soling out into a major decolment in here. And uh, then talking about the mid-lower crust, we were having a basic shear zone, the one recognized in the south, uh, Badaha shear zone. And the most representative unit is the central unit here. If we look at the reflectivity in general, so the reflectivity pattern is very low in here, which is already a representation for a suture unit, which has destroyed all the reflections. And then the reflectivity here is remarkable, and this is the mid-lower crust, and we have provided some explanation why is it like that, and how these uh, mantle plumes were acting to give this high reflectivity. And to the southern, northernmost part, we have this listric normal faulting. And now, coming to the Alcudia wide angle transect, which was the second part of my project, we used actually five shots with 100 kilograms in every borehole, which was like 50 meters deep. And uh, the instruments were from IRS, Pascal, and Texan. 
So we acquired actually 350 kilometers long data, which was complementing the previous Alcudia normal incidence transect. And we also did some processing. Uh, before I go to show you the short gathers, these are the normal nomenclatures we use to identify different seismic events in the short gathers. So just look at short gather number two. We have very uh, we have very prominent PG first arrivals, which can be traced to really long offsets. Similarly, we had the Moho phase, and then we have a phase between the upper crust and middle lower crust. And similarly, we have the mantle arrivals. And of course, there were some deeper arrivals, which we keep for the future work. And similarly, for shot A3, we identified the same arrivals and shot A4 and shot A5. So these were the PE arrivals, P wave arrivals. And now I will show you the arrivals for the shear waves. So we were imaging some very good first arrivals for the shear waves and for the moho arrivals of the shear waves for short gather A2, A3, A4, and A5. So this is the first result from the picking of the P wave arrivals and S wave arrivals. We managed to extract a velocity model, which is around 280 kilometers long from the central unit all the way to the Tajo, Tajo Basin or Madrid Basin. If we look at the velocity structure in the upper crust, it's pretty much lateral. It's not fluctuating too much. But as soon as we go beneath the Tajo Basin, the trajectory of these isolines, they are moving up, so which is showing already an increase in velocity beneath the Tajo Basin. Another feature which I would like to mention is the velocity jump. We image between upper crust and mid-lower crust. And another velocity jump, of course, at the crust and mantle boundary. Uh, and then another, the, sorry. another thing was the deepening of the moho from the south towards the north. So it is the first time that we will introduce this or publish this. Similarly, we cal calculated the poison ratios and the densities. And they are very much complementing the original results. And this is a figure which I would like to just quickly mention, that the arrival times for the moho here are deeper than what we see here. So the wide angle transect, which is 70 kilometers further to the north, is imaging a deep moho. And this is also a complementing from wide angle to normal incidence. They are pretty much complementing each other. We also put in constraint on the composition of the Central Iberian Zone and Tajo Basin. And finally, the conclusions that the upper crust, in the upper crust, the deformation is pretty much homogenized, <clears throat> whereas in the mid-lower crust, we need to have a decolment level. Similarly, the wide angle is providing a velocity constraint and some, some things which I have mentioned already. And of course, the horizontal discontinuity from 13 kilometers to 20 kilometers, and the moho depth, which is also fluctuating from 30 kilometers to 36 kilometers. And these are my contributions to the topo mode. We are waiting for the second article to be published, uh, accepted as soon as possible, so I can complete my PhD dissertation. We wait for a very kind <laughs> acceptance as soon as possible. So this is published. This, yeah. So this, this is my contribution for topo mode. Uh, just one, uh, five more seconds. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the senior researchers initiating an innovative and remarkable project. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank my supervisor. Uh, he's not here, but yeah. So <laughs> he, I mean, he has to leave for something. So yeah, yeah thank you very much.